He's Tom Skinner. Tom, Bosch. Cheers, Bosch. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> so, The Apprentice. Yes. Amazing programme. Loved it. Uh, you know, and of course, Michelle, who was on before me, was yep. in it a couple of years before you, and it's been a big success in this country. In America, of course, the host of it over there for a long time was one certain New York yep. businessman called Donald J. Trump. Clearly, you know, you're kind of, can I say, Jack the Lad? Yes, yeah, folks, Sergeant. Um, <laughs> bit of a geezer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How did you get on with Alan Sugar? Uh, do you know what? He's a lovely, lovely man. Um, obviously, when I've done The Apprentice, I ain't like a normal person that goes on The Apprentice. And um, I'm a market trader from Romford. That's what I've always done. Went on the show. Really, really enjoyed it. Was, I, found it I found it, like, enjoyable. But when, but when I was talking to Alan, like, he's, he's a genuine person, you know? He's, he's not... He comes across on that screen like a really scary guy. But when you actually talk to him in person one-to-one, -one, yeah. he's a top bloke and he'll give you advice. But he still got rid of you. He still sacked me, you he know what I mean? He still fired you <laughs> for, for not being diligent, not completing tasks on time. I lost every task, didn't I, Nigel? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I was pony on there, let's be honest. I was absolutely <laughs> pony. <laughs> and yet, afterwards, Sugar said, after he sacked you, Sugar said that you were the kind of man you'd want to have with you in the trenches at war. So he was still quite nice about it's you. lovely, wasn't it, yeah. You're, uh, I mean, in a sense, Tom, your sort of early years, they are a bit checkered, aren't they? I mean, school, yeah. um, school is a bit checkered. Yeah. Uh, you did get kicked out. Got expelled, you? yeah. What did you get expelled? For being entrepreneurial, for selling porno DVDs. Is, is, <laughs> <laughs> you deserved it. But none of this has held you back in any way at all. So talk to us about the word Bosch. Do you know what? what? So I didn't even know I said the word Bosch until I went on The Apprentice. And it's just a word that we've always said, you know, Bosch. Like, it's just, you know, hey, doing all right, sweet Bosch. I don't know where it, where it comes from. But, but as soon as I went on The Apprentice, everything picked up. I sat about 400 times a day. And when it went on the telly, it became a trend. Everyone started saying Bosch all the time, Nigel. And it, it was madness. And, and uh, now I've named me business Bosch Beds after yep. the word. Like, I'm Bosch Global. I've got a couple of Bosch companies. Even Bosch Golf Club. Even I've got, yeah, the Bosch Drive. I'm on the shopping channel twice a week. Sell me Golf Club, I'm making a living out of the word Bosch, which is uh, which ain't too. Yeah, sad. That's your brand now. Bosch beds that is that, that that is now your sort of big, yeah, big emerging business. Yeah, how big is Bosch beds? It's pretty big now. Started off just me and my mate in the van together, uh, knocking out matches, knocking on doors. Literally, that was us. Right? I'm not gonna lie to you, that was us. I mean, you are the modern day Del Boy, right? <laughs> <laughs> trying to be, but like that, that's how we started. And so we started knocking on doors. Look, we've got these mattresses. Um, now we employ 12 staff. We supply 200 hotels throughout the UK. We, we sell hundreds of mattresses every single week. And we're a serious, you know, we're, the, we're almost a household name with the, with the mattresses now, which is good. So. And you manufacture these in the UK? Yes, everything has got to be made in the UK. It's really important to me. A lot of these big bed brands, they buy from China. But I mean, uh, IKEA run out of mattresses a little while ago because they couldn't get the stock from China. And we was inundated with orders yep. simply because we had the stock physically making it in the UK and we was there and we had it and, and we, we'd done well out of it. But Tom, let me ask you a question. If you're manufacturing yeah. things like mattresses and beds in the United Kingdom, how the hell do you get them to market at a competitive price? What you've got to realise is, is matches are really big and bulky and so are beds. So containers are very expensive at the minute and you can't get a lot in a container, especially from China. So when they actually come over here, once you've paid the travel, it, it's, not, it's not as competitive. Whereas what we do is we work extremely skinny on margins. So we ain't greedy, but we'll do hundreds of matches every single week. So that's, that's how we do well. You're doing hundreds every week? Hundreds every single week. And, and what, what Bosch Beds is so good at is, I, I mean, our best-selling mattress, the Aloe Vera mattress, um, is around four to five hundred pounds, depending on the size you get. The equivalent in the in the big brand stores, like the big retailers, is over, is over fifteen hundred quid. So that's why we're just inundated, and we've got that personal touch. We'll go and knock on your door, we'll ring you up next day, ask you how your bed was, how your sleep was, and we just like look after people. And you started off with pillows. Started off with pillows, yeah. And then because uh, in America, my pillow is absolutely yeah. enormous. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, and he's, he's in this country now as well, isn't he, I think? Yes. I think Mike Pillows. Yeah, a little bit, So yeah. you're still doing the pillows? We're still doing them. Um, we, we got stuck a little bit with COVID because, obviously, maddest thing in the world, we couldn't manufacture pillows, but we could still manufacture beds. I don't know how that works, but, but we, we sort of slowed down on the pillow front and we pushed on the mattresses. And, obviously, now we're known for mattresses and, and pillows as a sideline. You know, it's just what we do Why on the side. Why are you side. making loads of money? We're doing all right. We're having a go, you know what I mean? We're having a go. 
sitting here talking, having a pint with you is quite nice. Well, very good. We met once before, mm. and it's, it's very nice to see you. Now, what I want to get to, Tom Skinner, and this is important, is, you know, you're somebody, you say, educationally, no advantages, didn't, you know, didn't, didn't do the university thing, didn't no. get qualifications at school particularly. You've gone on and succeeded. And there are people out there, lots of people out there, who aren't particularly academic, yeah. don't fit in very well at school. And I kind of feel in a society where we've encouraged so many kids to go to university, that those that don't go are almost made to feel a bit like failures, a bit like they haven't made the grade. Yes, it's, it's wrong, really. Like, I, I mean, look, I'm dyslexic, um, so I st still to this day, I've got someone that's on my paperwork for me because I cannot do it, can't do it. Sorry, that beer's a bit gassy. <laughs> right? And, um, yeah, you're right, you know, so many kids, especially nowadays, are taught, you have to do this, you have to do that. I'd say, look, find something that you're good at, concentrate on it, whether it be anything what it is, you find your goal, your, 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 you know, what you're great at, and you focus on that, like, I'm good at selling, I'm good at talking to people. So what's the art of selling? Just listen, making someone like you and uh, getting someone a good price, and that's it. That is simply all it is. It's that easy. Getting them a good price or getting you a good getting price? Getting them a good price. And yourself, of course. You've got to make a profit as well, haven't you? <laughs> Can't <laughs> well, do it nothing. <laughs> because I'm just thinking, you know, people like you, I think, potentially, quite an interesting role model for people who, as I say, like you, maybe dyslexic, find school very difficult, don't fit in particularly. What, what does it take to be an entrepreneur? A lot of our work, I mean, this morning I was up at 4.30 this morning, loading the vans up, um, like, and then, because then, we've got to cut the drivers off with the dreaded COVID at the minute, which is a nightmare. Um, I've loaded the vans up, it's hard work, you know, made sure everyone's so always you're physically there. physically doing all this yourself? Physi I, look, yeah, I mean, not every day I do it, because we, we've got a lot of stuff in place that do do them roles, but on days, I, I, I'm very hands-on, I love getting involved. Like, when well, you've got to be an entrepreneur, you've got to work long hours, it's, it's our graft. But I enjoy it. But the rewards are, are brilliant. Yeah, I think that's right. There's no substitute, is there? I yeah, of course. People think being self-employed could be a soft touch, but it's not, is it? It's a, it's a damn difficult look, thing to do. Anyone, look, anyone can do a nine to five and, 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 and go to work, and, and I'm well done with them going to work. But if you want to step outside that box and you feel like you've got an idea, like uh, anyone who's watching this, go and run with it. Give yourself a go. Give it 100% because you find out that you actually have got some skills that you never knew you had. And... You, and Anything you can overcome, especially um, I've found it when I've been grafting, that I've found things I thought I could never do, and in the end I found I can do them. So you're not standing on a freezing market stall in Rumford Market anymore? I, st I, still, I still do the odd market here and there. Do well, you? Yes, of course I do. Yeah, I love them. See me blood. I can't, I can't stuff it. I love doing the odd market <laughs> stall every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fascinating. You don't need to, do you? No, I don't need to at all, but I just love it. I absolutely love it. I love meeting people. I love standing there. I love doing a deal. Um, but we've done, we done Northfield Market a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I was just on the store, so I was selling, I was selling bar stools, funny enough, yeah. uh, for 25 quid, that was 80 quid online, and we just do it, we've done loads of them, and I just love the buzz, people going, can I have a photo of you, Tom, I see you on the telly, and it was just a nice day, earn a few quid, treat, treat the missus in the evening, and had a, had a laugh. It's, it's fascinating, and golf is obviously your big hobby, this is, this is your big thing, is it? Yeah. And tell us about the Dream 4 ball. What, Dream 4 ball, come on. I don't know, I have, you know, <laughs> I, I couldn't actually say my Dream 4 ball is, because I'd, I, I, there's not enough, there's not enough, uh, you can't have four players, can you? <laughs> are, are you a good player? I'm okay, I've got an 11 handicap. Yeah. Um, I've just brought out my boss driver. So, who, so, okay, let's just get into that then. Because, I mean, the, the golf market yeah. is massively yeah. competitive. Yeah. Uh, you know, these golf superstores, online, you know, tens of millions play this game globally. Yeah. You've got real money to spend. How on earth do you get? In, how, how on earth do you get into a market like that? Well, I'll tell you what happened, Nigel. Right. So, I have, I did have an old set of clubs that were my granddad's handed down. They was ancient, and then my driver went a bit wafty. I smashed the floor. Ed come flying. I thought, time to get a new club. In temper. So I said, no, no. Literally smashed. Literally had a miss it. Bang. Whacked into the floor. Ed's gone further than the ball. Thought, God, go and get a new driver. So I got into the pro shop. And they're all 600 quid. And the pros going to me, well, you're not quite good enough for that one. And this one, you've got to screw up to do that. And this one, you need to... And I went, I just want a driver I can hit, mate. And uh, in the end, I thought, sod this, I'm going to go and make my own. So I went and found the manufacturer. I went, went and done some designs. Went and spoke to the big brands, copied a couple of ideas, and brought out my own Bosch driver. And uh, we've been doing... We've been on the shopping channel with it, uh, on Ideal World, and we've been doing really well with it. And uh, what does the Bosch driver set me back? Uh, 199 quid. So it's a third of the price of, of the of the competitors. Is it any good? It's the nuts. It's the nuts. I'll tell you this what. This is what Del Boy said to everybody who bought stuff. I'll tell you what. 
I'll give you one. I'll give right. you one. Right? You play with it as yep. many times as you want, right? Yep. And if and for nothing, and if it's rubbish, yep. I'll give you two hundred quid as well. There you go. Right? He's, he's the salesman. <laughs> he never blooming stops, does he? He's the salesman. No, it's really interesting. I mean, I, I'm, I'm amazed that you can break into a market like golf. It's difficult. Absolutely yeah. Amazing. So what's next for Tom Skinner? What do you do next? Um, oh, there's loads. Probably a putter. <laughs> <laughs> Probably bring a putter out. Um, I'm going to carry on focusing on my beds and my mattresses. Um, we've got new ranges. We've got new pillars launching just before Christmas. Um, I want to I grow the business, you know. I want to keep building it up. Because um, all all, most, of, most of my employees are my childhood friends as well. Yeah. Keep it nice and close, but we're expanding now. We're nationwide now. Um, and just want to... Just want to really build an empire. That's, that's the plan. Yeah, maybe one day go public or do whatever people Love do. To, yeah, maybe, maybe that would be a little IPO or something. Well, we had somebody in not long ago, um, Charlie Mullins, Pimlico Plumbers. Yeah. And he's just sold his company for, I think, £145 million, So it yeah. can be done. Of course. Um, what about the country? What about the state of the country, Tom? How do you see the state of the country right now? Yeah, it's, it's not in the best state at the moment, is it? Let's be honest. Um, but... You know, I think we've all got to keep cracking away and keep and keep doing what we're doing and and and, and just you know, is, I'll tell you, man. I mean, the pandemic. You know, the pandemic. I mean, what that's done. What what I think to, to sort of people's psychology. Yeah. What what I think is really really scary is so many people have lost their businesses, lost their jobs, they're on their knees, and there's no help out there at the minute. You know, we just spoke before we come on about the COVID passports. How do they expect hospitality sector to survive? Well, these you know, well, all these things that they're trying to do, they're just. They're just cutting people's, they're cutting people's knees off so they can't walk. And I don't understand why that's happening because it ain't good for the economy. No tax is going to be paid. Like, I don't think people understand the follow-on of what is actually going on. Yeah, it is the little people, it is the self-employed mm. that have been hurt. But the, hosp just, the hospitality sector... That no, this is the maddest thing. What people don't realise is, is literally, like, mo the majority of the tax in this country is from SME, small businesses, self-employed. That's where the money and comes from. they're ignored. Pay. They're well, ignored. Yeah, but, but that's where the money goes for the NHS. That's where the taxes come from. And no-one seems to see this. I don't... It's mental. Is Boris a good Prime Minister? Look, I mean, he's got a silly haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and a dodgy suit. I, I don't mind. I don't mind Boris. I don't mind Boris at all. Look, to be honest with you, when it comes to politics, I don't know enough to say what a good promise is and what and what a bad one is as well. So I don't know. But, but you want a country that's well run, of course, of and course. And you're clearly very patriotic. Of hundred percent. You know, hundred percent. Of course, cool, Sam. I'm, I'm very proud and saying that all my products are made in the UK. You know, so on every on every single bed you'll see a big Union Jack, Sam, made with love in the UK. It's what we do. And I guess really the story here above all, Tom, is for young people that want to really make a big career in something, yeah. get on telly. Get on telly, yeah. Because you've done all this without The Apprentice. Do you know what? I, look, look, before I was on The Apprentice, I was doing OK. Um, it gave me a massive, massive leg up. I would, have got, I would have got there in the end. It took me a lot longer, but I would have got there. I'd never given up. But um, look, for anyone that's watching this that wants to become an entrepreneur, get to work, just give it a go. Like, just go and give it your all. Whatever, whatever it is... Just believe in yourself, and it don't matter how big the steps are you're taking, as long as you're in the right direction, that's it, you know what I mean? Well, that was Tom Skinner on Talking Pints, saying to people, give it your all, believe in yourself, and go for it. How about that? <laughs>